Hi, I'm Mark Richard Adams, post-production specialist. Thanks for joining me today on Colour Me In for another post-production demonstration. And welcome back. Today, we're gonna to look at Avid in conjunction with it working well with Resolve. This particular demo today is gonna to be if you have a problem importing certain codecs into Avid that won't wrap to DNX and how we can utilize Resolve for that process. So we've got Avid open here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a problem with some clips that won't import. So if I go to source browser, traditionally I wanna import them. And if I go to media cam two. Now, some of these clips here, let's try importing this one and see what happens. And here we go. You may have come across this before, this particular um, error message. So it's not happy with this MP4 file, okay? So what are you gonna do? Um, let's cancel that out. Now, I'm on a busy edit with a client and I need to get this media in straight away. So how are we gonna do it without using Avid and without having to chase down all the plugins for Avid or the traditional AMA installers, okay? So I'm just gonna close that out. And now I'm gonna jump into Resolve. So here in Resolve, we got a timeline there. And I'm just going to now find those same clips or the same clip. So here we go here. Here's the, the same clip we just looked at in Avid that wouldn't import. Now, um, you'll see that Resolve's not really having a problem with it. Quite happy. Um, and in order for Resolve to do anything with it, we need to actually bring it into the media pool, which is here. So, so we've got a timeline and that clip in the media pool. Now, if I go to um, the edit workspace, and I'm just gonna drag that clip onto the timeline. And for the purposes of the video, let's just shorten the clip. So it's a quick export. There we go, that's, 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 that's okay. What are we gonna do? How can we use Resolve to transcode? So this is the way that we can do it. So we can sort of um, go around Avid and import this stuff separately. So I'm just now gonna to go to the render page and I'm now gonna utilize these tools here, these options in the inspector. Now, I've got a lot of this set up already, but I'll just step through it. So if we um, we want the file name to be source name, uh, we want to be on custom, of course, really important. If we hit browse, I need to navigate these clips to the traditional way that Avid houses its transcoded media, and that is in its Avid MXF media files um, folder. Note the capital A, the space, capital M, the no space between the A and the capital F files there. So Avid media files, <clears throat> really important. If those aren't correct, correct spacing, correct um, the capitals, um, the files won't relink, you won't see them. There's always an MXF folder and there's always a number one folder. Okay, here, there it is. I'm gonna make sure that I'm choosing the number one folder to ingest my media. Now you can use different number folders and. You can use number two, you know, in multiple numbered folders, but because we've got number one here, let's just choose that. Click open. Okay, so we've got the source name here. We've got the location. Let's go down. We want them to be individual clips, absolutely. In the video section here, we've got some options. Okay, and direct video export. We have all this, all these wrappers here. Okay. Now, what's really important is these two, MXF OP Atom and MXF OP 1A. Now, the difference between these two are... Uh, it's quite vast actually in, in a sense and it's very important to get this right at this stage. We want to be focusing on MXF OP Atom. Now think of OP1 Atom as a, it's going to transcode these files but it's going to individually wrap the um, video and audio files into individual uh, wrappers, okay? So they're going to be individual files which is what actually Avid wants and how Avid traditionally would media manage its um, transcode into uh, into its Avid Media Files folder, okay? If you were to choose OP1A, that's gonna make one file with all the video and audio essences in that one file. So it's quite good for an export, okay? But we wanna import, so we're gonna choose Atom. Now, as we go down, I'm happy with the resolution because it is all HD. Um, we don't need to bother too much with the advanced settings, but let's jump over to the audio. I'm happy with the audio. You could change the bit depth to 24. But if your original files were 24, of course, choose 24, but I think these are 16, so that's fine. Um, go to file. Now let's just double check the file. We want to make sure that the source name comes through. Okay, so we're not changing anything to do with this clip other than the codec, okay? Go down, that's great. 
Now, we're going to um, make sure the clip is selected, so from start to end, and you can do that by right-clicking and going entire timeline. Okay, and it's this section will be lit here. Now I'm going to add to render queue and start rendering. Okay, we're done. Now let's have a look at finder level what's happened. So now at finder level, we see that in the Avid Media Files folder, in the MXF, in the number one, we now have those three clips. We have the video essence. We have the audio track one essence and audio track two essence. If you had a, a, a file with eight channels of audio, there'd be eight audio channels in here as well. Okay, so each essence has been wrapped up in its own MXF file, okay, which is what Avid wants, okay? So this is good. You'll also notice, well, there's nothing else in this folder here, okay? Now, when we jump back to Avid, look what happens. It's very quick. Did you see that flash up on screen there? Um, that was Avid scanning the drive. Now, if you've got many, many clips in there, you'll take time to scan it, and you'll see a little um, scanning bar going across the screen. Um, now let's go back and have a look at what's happened, and you can see that Avid has added these two media database files, and these are really important because it's telling Avid where these, these files live in relation to the project itself, okay? So without these, you won't see anything in Avid, they're really important. So that's the first stage, okay? So we've got around the issue with Avid not wanting to import the MP4s. So now let's go back to Avid, and we've got nothing in the project, of course. We need something in the project, and the way to get around that, or the way to do that, you could do it through the media tool, but a quick way is if you just open the Finder folder up, and this particular folder here, the MMOB file, if you just drag that into your bin, let go, and your clip appears. Hit play, and there we go. Note, the clip is one file with the audio and you can see here the video and audio attached. That's the way Avid is compiling them together, okay? At the back end, at the finder end, the files are separate, okay? So when you start ingesting and you see multiple different files and multiple different audio channels, it's all right, it's okay. If this was the OP1A file, there'd just be one file in here, and actually Avid wouldn't import it this way. You'd have to import it through the source browser, okay? So this is a great way to get round an import issue with Avid if it's not reading the codec or the wrapper, and also a great way of showing you how Avid and Resolve can dovetail beautifully together. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please give me a like or subscribe or type in down below demos you'd like to see next. Catch you next time.